Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Just another random review, and this is of a film from 2001, uh, right before Spider Man came out, actually, the first one. Uh, Earth vs. the Spider. It was a TV movie. I'm not sure if it was for Cinemax or Showtime. Um, but I know it's part of that Stan Winston creature feature. Like I know Michael Keenan one time he was talking about the Stan Winston creature feature films. Uh, basically, I'm just looking that up now. Cinemax. That's what it is. It was Cinemax. Because he did like a bunch of films that he supervised special effects on and I guess it was kind of their ode to the 50s sci-fi flicks like stuff that uh, American International Pictures had done that those kind of movies in the 50s these B movies but then they had like some good practical effects and stuff in it and then Stan Winston produces and also supervises the the effects and it is his studio that does the effects on these. Um, now, while I've not seen the other films, like She Creature and stuff, I know Mike. I thought his review was still up for this film. I know he had talked about this film one time, but I guess it's not. Um, Irvers the Spider stars Dan Aykroyd. And I want to get the, the kid's name, the lead. Uh, basically, this kid, he is a shy guy, quiet guy fan of comic books. Of course they can't, they don't have the dough to get any actual comic book characters so he's not reading the Hulk or Thor or Captain America or Spider-Man. They had to make up a comic book character I think it was like the Arachnid Avenger it was something like that. Arachnid Avenger I believe. I mean he's a shy quiet guy. He works as a security guard for this uh, biochem lab he has like an older guy who um, is his friend. He has uh, this hot girl who's a neighbor who's also a close friend of his. And uh, this film is directed by Scott Zeal. And this guy, unfortunately, he's gone to do Cruel Intentions, Cruel Intentions Three, and Roadhouse Two: Last Call. Not really a great career so far, but Devin Gummers. Gummersall, he's the lead guy, Devin. Um, I think he's most well known for that. He was in that TV show, My So Called Life. By the way, again, he's the lead. Again, he has the girlfriend, not a girlfriend, but he has this hot neighbor girl. Security guard, this biochem lab. Kind of deals with these bullies, but not really because the, the girl sort of sticks it to them. The guy's sort of embarrassed. Um, he visits his friend at the comic book shop, and his friend is actually John Cho, Harold from Harold and Kumar, um, who shows him like this arachnid right Avenger, like little statuette and comic book. Although I must say, John Cho, they have him doing a little bit over the top with the accent. I don't really understand why they didn't just let him talk normal like he does in Harold and Kumar. That'd give a very kind of thick accent. Um, Almost as if he's the guy from Gremlins or something. Almost. Um, it was nice to see John Cho there, but you know, I don't know again why they have him doing. Just let him talk normal, for fuck's sake. Uh, but he leaves there, goes to his job at the lab. But again, they're at this lab. They're testing on spiders and their implications with how humans can have the abilities of the spider. It's pretty much like if Spider-Man went wrong because. He's with his friend, bad guys go in, um, his older friend, his partner goes in, he gets captured, and then this asshole cop and his partner, and in fact, the lead guy kind of saves the asshole cop, he kind of pulls him back while everything's going haywire, the guy probably would have got killed himself, but that cop is mad at him, you killed your partner, you killed my partner, Beast of the lead. Um, Dan Aykroyd comes in to intervene, and he's actually one of the. He's a his character's a detective, but he's actually a, a good guy. But then this lead not only has his partner been killed, not only has his asshole cop been beating him up, but then he gets fired, saying, you know, but how do you let this happen? 
I'm thinking, this is some bullshit. The guy has a fucking pepper spray. What's he gonna do? Make them minty fresh? There's armed motherfuckers with guns and masks over their face. Well, what's he gonna do? Spray on their shoes? I mean, shine your boots for you? It's pepper spray. What the fuck is he gonna do? So I think that was kind of bullshit that they did that. But it makes you, I guess, root for the lead guy a little bit more. And he does a fine job. But the guy's sort of out of it and he sees the serum. He puts the serum inside himself. And... The film... I think it's an okay film. I mean, most of it is just him changing. Um, like he has Webb coming out of his stomach. Like he's sleeping on a hammock and Webb has shot out and he's been rising up and he realizes he's shooting his Webb. He, he shoots Webb at his dog. Don't worry, the dog survives. Um, he has this insatiable hunger that keeps growing. Um, there's this guy, I guess he was a certain killer who's trying to hurt his friend, the neighbor. He takes the guy and throws him way across the hallway through a door. Which snaps so hard that it snaps the guy's neck. Um, this hunter grows. He starts having this thing that grows on him that looks like a tattoo. Uh, his arm starts changing. Um, mandibles at one point come out of his mouth. Um, like he wants to be a hero, so he stops this. What he thinks is this guy attacking this girl. Flips the guy over, kills him. But then the girl's like, "That was my boyfriend." Da, da, da. So he webs her. Um, it jumps th the same asshole cop from before gets there, and he jumps on that guy and drags him away. The bullies from in the beginning, he one follows him in the basement. And he like snaps one with his web and pulls him back in. And then amongst that is just his neighbors trying to. She's trying to get to him through his door, but she can't reach him. And Dan Aykroyd does a little bit of investigating, like finds a little bit of stuff here and there with the web, goes back to the lab. He's told by a guy kind of some of the stuff they're doing there. Um, he has a little bit of backstory, I think, way back when he had a partner and he wasn't able to shoot the perp. And he has a, a wife who's always a drunk. And you can tell, you pretty much guess she's probably cheating on him because she, she wants strong men and she was smacking on the asshole cop. Um, and then you get to the ending where, you know, he's changing more and more like a spider, sprout spider legs. Uh, Dan Aykroyd arrives at the building, tries to knock on the door, goes in the basement, finds all these webbed people, including the asshole cop, who Aykroyd's trying to get out, but his drunk bitch followed him there, thinking that, I guess she thought that Dan Aykroyd, you keeping him away from me, you keeping the asshole cop, you're doing it, I mean, it's just a stupid drunk bitch. The cop grabs Dan Aykroyd's gun, shoots himself, and the web, and the lead guy who's now pretty much a spider attacks the bitch ultimately kills her that would follows him the lead has grabbed his neighbor webbed her up but he wants to be stopped and he knows he needs to be shot in the heart so he tells Dagroy to shoot him Dagroy doesn't want to the lead jumps at the girl Dagroy shoots and then he's killed and that's pretty much the movie I mean is that much a review? I mean, to be honest, it's not much of a movie. I mean, I thought it was so-so. You know, it's okay. Um, it's better than some of the sci-fi stuff I've seen. Because you did... If you don't see the film, you see it for Stan Winston's practical effects. And his studio's effects. Once in a while, CGI gets in there, a little tad. But most part, it's practical. And there's a lot of good practical stuff. The spider lace, you know, the good makeup, final makeup of lead as the spider creature um not there's not a lot of CGI that's oh my god it looks awful thankfully you know when the web shoot now the guy looks good um thankfully a very very minimal use of CGI at least that I noticed um 
but mostly practical, which was welcomed. Um, that's probably the main reason to see this. I mean, the story is okay. I mean, it is pretty much you took Spider-Man and the Fly and you smash them together. I did find it kind of slow at times. I did find it kind of boring at times. Um, it is better than a lot of the Sci-Fi Channel stuff, but at the same time, I've seen a lot of X-Files episodes. I mean, this is where I'm coming from. I saw, you know, this is 2001. That's almost eight years of X-Files episodes. Well, I guess by the time I saw this, you know, all those... I've seen a lot of X-Files episodes that, you know, have similar stuff like this in it, so it didn't blow me away. Plus, X-Files episodes are only 45 minutes, so a little bit better pace. I think, you know, it's okay. It didn't make me mad because the performances were fine. Dan Aykroyd was fine. He's not given a lot to do, Dan Aykroyd. Mainly just one, like a handful of times trying to look at a crime scene talking a little bit with his drunk wife which really doesn't add up to anything really getting drunk at one time and then the ending where he, he doesn't want to shoot then he fires again there is not really given too much to do to be honest um, the the look of the film I, I don't really know why it look, I mean I guess it's supposed to in keeping with the town book here because you don't really know what year this film takes place in because you know John Cho at one time comes out he has a fucking lightsaber one of those glow glow you know those lightsabers that glow for a little toy but yet Dan Edward dresses like a drum shoe from the 50s and he even has like one of those old phones in his car you know no cell phone or anything just you know, duh, duh. so you know I don't know Maybe it would have worked better if it was just, you know, boom, present day, and not, you know, the film noir didn't appeal to me in this film, maybe it will to others, but that didn't really appeal to me in this film, the film noir, I thought the pace went too slow, I mean, you don't get comparisons with The Fly, which is a big mistake, because, you know, The Fly did it very much better, um, and Dan Andrew, I would like to have been doing more, and there's not really tons of, there's not really much of gore, it's kind of a bloodless film, to be honest. It really is bloodless. Um, I don't really see why this would be rated R, to be honest. I mean, this would easily be PG-13. I mean, you don't see any blood or guts or gore or anything like that. Um, but, again, I don't hate the film because Dan Aykroyd, for what he had to do, he didn't have much to do, but he was fine in it. The lead guy, Devin... Uh, Drummer saw he did a, he did find the the lead good practical makeup fits by Stan Winston um, which helps a lot in these kind of made for TV films so yeah it's not a horrible film you could do so so much worse but you know you could also watch you know some episodes of the X Files you can watch the Fly and the Fly Two again. Uh, if you like Stan Winston and you want to see his studio do some good effects, you can give the film a watch. You know, and the whole thing with he's really in the comic books, he wants to be a hero, but then it backfires on him. Decent story, I thought. So I don't hate the film. Um, I just wish that it had maybe more blood, guts, and gore. Because it's kind of a bloodless film. It really is. Uh, or maybe a little bit more action at the ending because it's kind of like Dad refines him. He wants him to shoot him. He can't, then he shoots, and then that's kind of the end of the story. So it kind of, you know, you can kind of, other than the great makeup effects, the rest of the stuff, you can kind of see that it was made for TV, you know, the, the limited amount of sets and things like that. I don't know. It just, it's okay. It's an okay film. You know, on the positives, good makeup effects by Stan Winston's company, and you know the cast did fine for what they had to do, and a decent story. Spider-Man turned wrong, but at the same time, I thought it got too, a little too slow and boring at times. Um, I've seen stuff done much better like this on 
pace wise and like X Files episodes and stuff like that. The film noir timeline, uh eh. I probably much, for me personally would much prefer that this was just boom in today's age maybe. Um And not even knowing what the timeline is, uh, you know. Sometimes it's really, you know, today's age, but at times it seems like it's the 50s. Uh, but mainly the pace and, you know, not much blood or gore or anything like that at all. Which was um, too bad. But either way, so-so okay film. And I don't love the film. Um, but it's an okay film. And if you if you like Stan Winston's effects work, you want to see some really good effects work. Um, look wise, you know, Spiralays coming out look good. Give that give it a look then. Give it a look sometime. But don't really expect too much. Cause you know I saw it once. Don't need to see it again. But you know I wasn't mad or pissed off or ranting about. It. So you know either way. Uh, thanks for watching this is kind of shorter review and take care later